enote yaka na leze nke ichuku you are not far from the kingdom of god onwere beria la injiri ni hiala in 1986 onwe ofu onya isi na obu nyera anyi siri na obu nyera manendo kwa ya na ekuku anyi leti yonu oga no mbo no a correct ha anyi na eku oga ben ke ku emere ga dige o o sai kpuchito no obu gi ha ba ito chiri kwe nke turum no enya kari abo e be gabo gwo onu zeni gwe gabo gwo e bezina akwa ine kwe this woman ba una makwive kedu ka onu zeni gwe ga si abo gwo una amara no nwere ndi na erute no onu zo amafi ikpefe jebo kummo if uno gane kwebo e be gabo gwo anieze ni gwe gabo gwo e bezina unye beraj obya sobany you are not far from the kingdom but you are not yet inside oh. you haven't entered the gate of heaven as a reward well e panyi ga anwu aru anyi erure mkpro bi anya ga ebe na iruchuku were iruchuku ahu ka onu ze enigwe ekpe gi ikpe ijegedeze mbe bu ugwo ge now why did jesus tell this man that he was not far from the kingdom of heaven because he knew what would take him to the kingdom omar he had enough knowledge if you remember we have been reading from the gospel of mark serially continuous reading last sunday now about batimeus son of timaeus was begging to see today a lawyer came a to ask him one of the scribes came to ask him a question when two priests are living together there are many ways they help each other they eat together they pray together they share ideas share their sorrows share their joys and they compare notes for homily what do we say today on this word what, what strikes you today on the word of god while they are eating or while after prayer they exchange such notes emne fara polinus neki ebu nyotansa on a new thing and came in a new thing and key i wouldn't come you didn't and key this morning oh you all copy them she didn't know he reminded me that judging or copy turn and came last sunday where when you did and can answer and key this morning he had copy turn and came last sunday he reminded me that according to my preaching last sunday you had a movement from the apostles and their request to the blind beggar and his request and how the request of the blind beggar was some form of education also and example for the apostles and then he went behind he said one you have the request of the rich man who came to ask jesus what must i do to gain eternal life 
After that request of the rich man came the request of the apostles. After the request of the apostles came the request of the poor beggar. And this last one is the request of the learned man. Unyengwiregu. Ndenduka. Umogbenye. Anandamarihe. Otutodri Jesu. For every group, Jesus has some specific teaching. And from their own quests, we also learn something for our own life. When the, learned, when the rich man came to Jesus, Jesus answered him. That was in Mark chapter 10. Why do you call me good? You know the commandments. Hear that? You know the commandments. And Jesus gave him the examples of the commandments. Don't kill. Don't commit adultery. Don't be a false witness. Honor, honor your father and your mother. And the man said, look, I have kept all these things since my infancy, since I was a child. Ah, Jesus said, then there is hope for you. The man can no man He was at the gate. He wasn't far from the kingdom. But then Jesus told him, there is one thing left. If you have made these efforts, there's one thing left. Go. Detach yourself from your wealth so that you know that the source of your happiness, the source of your serenity, the source of your success is not those things you have, but God himself. Give those things away. Come and follow me and you'll be a happy man. The man wrote, not lose any way. Ma about turn like the way. Otito did so. He was not far. But he did not enter. Now the context changes. When Jesus encountered Bartimaeus, remember he was on his way to Jerusalem and he passed through Jericho. Oruleg Jerusalem, no Kajiki Jeku. But God Batazar Jerusalem, he entered triumphantly, even though he entered on a donkey. People were hailing him. And immediately he entered, he showed his authority by entering the temple to purify the temple and drive people away. After that, he started some difficult teachings. And the people came back to him and said, Bia, Tell us, with whose authority and by whose authority are you doing this? Now the leaders of religion came and asked him a question. But because their intention was evil, he didn't answer them. He told them, tell me John's authority and knowledge, where did it come from? From heaven or from earth? How come... That he answered the rich man, he answered the apostles and taught them, he answered the poor man, he answered now the scribe, but he didn't answer the religious leaders. Intention. And when he did not answer them, they started asking him questions. The first difficult question they asked him was about paying tax to Caesar. Political opponents formed an alliance. They asked him another question. A very difficult one. Those who believe in the didn't believe in the resurrection, the Sadducees, came and asked him, because some of us, some of you, some of you think 
that when we die, we continue the same type of life we lived here. That is why when your parents die, your brothers die, your friends die, and you think they were killed by their enemies, you give them knife to kill the person. Morubem or Jeshidebe chukubia be big bot chum mugu di got chung bot dondo. So Jeshibe queen su queen su haya or be ag bot. So bo pogat in bon area don't mind chiti bo ja be bag bot. Jesus tells us you who are slow, foolish and slow in understanding. But because they thought after that we continue marrying, Jesus answered them again, there you don't marry. Then this lawyer came. Mark does not indicate that he asked this question to tempt him. Because it was a burning question in their own time. Moses received the Ten Commandments from God. But from explaining the Ten Commandments between Moses and the time of Jesus, the commandments, the laws, who had become too many, which one is more important than the rest? Then Jesus answered him. One, check Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses five to 4 to 5, which was what we heard in the first reading. The Lord your God is one God. And before he gave that commandment, he said, listen, gain unto Israel. Listen. The Lord your God is one God and you will love him with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might or strength. That is the most important commandment. And Moses told them, if you read that chapter further, in order not to forget this, you must Say it in the morning, afternoon, night, when you rise up, when you are walking on the streets, when you are going to bed, teach it to your children. Tell them to teach it to their children. If possible, cut it, write it out, and place on your forehead so that you don't forget it. And they wrote it on their doors. And the scribes and Pharisees to show that they were serious in doing this, if you read then Matthew chapter 23, you'll find that Jesus said the scribes and the Pharisees occupy the chair of Moses. And they give, tell you what to teach, teach you what to do. Follow them because they are right in what they teach you. But all they do is only to attract public admiration. They don't, meet, they don't do what they teach. And one of the examples he gave of what they do to attract public admiration was to wear these laws, this law written on the paper in a very wide box. It is called phylactery. They wear brother phylacteries and tassels so that people will give them honor and greetings in the streets. They want public honor. But then, wearing those things were for them a sign that they were serious in keeping the commandment, the most important commandment of God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, chapter 5. But Jesus added Leviticus 19.18. Love your neighbor as yourself. Why? Because a love of God that does not flow into the love of neighbor is abstract. John Diasan Adjuani, Kediki Geisha Ikuni for a chuku, Nenya, Mema Ihu Hulegi, Mobur Nehu Madi Big Nenya, especially because Madi Big Bungwan Ke Chuku. Your neighbor is God's child. And you don't love your neighbor. 
and yet you say you love God. I always give you the example of our relationship with our mothers. If you love a woman, you must love his children. Otherwise, the friendship, it will not go far. The same thing with fathers. And if you love a, a, a boy or a, a girl, if you are friends, you must respect and love the mother. Otherwise, I'll walk a cog. Because, and all the more with mothers. When we were growing up, I always tell this story. If anybody abused your father, you would abuse his father in return. Abuse his forefathers. Abuse his whole clan. But once, just nig. The love of a mother must flow to the love into the love of his her children, and the love of children must arise also from the love of their parents. Love of neighbor, love of God, and this man said, "You have answered rightly," and he commented. You have to love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. I'm going to have some new terminals and Paulinus this morning, but I will leave it. Because I want just to stop at this. The Old Testament, the first reading, was written in Hebrew. And the language had its own way of describing human nature. The New Testament was written in Greek. For the Hebrews, the heart was the seat of knowledge and the seat of moral judgment. But for the Greeks, you had the heart and the mind distinguishing between the seat of knowledge and the seat of moral judgment, which the Hebrews did not distinguish. So, what really it means is that you love God with all that you are. Obrun Igbo. I'm surprised that the Igbo translation did not include it. Nobody in Asik ne madubu nyu bojo. Mana na asukwa ne ho afor disma afor tariyamiri. E ho tariyamiri. So na abru ba abru na asik tapi domi ha na jasigo woru chegli le mogli le obugli le e ho gli le wefu ya nanya ikegli le. Because as a matter of fact, to show you that we love with our stomach. So that As far as the law of Moses was concerned, love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. These two laws, one law, inseparable. Because as I said before, the love of God that does not include the love of neighbor is abstract, is not practical. You can't show God love. And he does not even need your love for himself. It is in loving your neighbor if nanyi na egoshi made ibegi ke ije egoshi chuku na ifuri ananya the same way love of neighbor must be a love that is founded on the love of god otherwise it can even be a form of altruistic selfishness philanthropy cannot go far if it is not rooted 
on some principle beyond the human being. Imen madogo. O jete kogeka mobro nesosi hi jemeb makamadon kete. If your love for human beings is founded only on the human beings themselves, it can't go far. Why? No matter how much love you show to human beings, some of those you have shown love will always betray and disappoint you. You walk. Check our families. Some of the women who are abused by their husbands. Every day. This guy still love him. And God and love, we are born and everything to please this man. You don't know what, what, what is wrong with him. You love a person with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul. And that person still does not reciprocate your love. How many mothers and fathers have been betrayed by their own children? Paid disrespect and even hatred for all the love they poured out to their children. But the mothers and fathers keep loving and that love is no longer founded on human beings. It is founded on the source of our being. That is why we must take our love beyond the horizontal level and let it drop from God himself because before he died, Jesus changed the principle of brotherly love. Moses said, love your neighbor as yourself. But Jesus said, love your neighbor as I have loved you. John chapter 15 verse 12. And how do I love you? No greater love has a man than this to give his, his life for his loved ones. The second reading from the letter to the Hebrews tells us that because of his love, Jesus, even though he was without sin, sacrificed himself. Sacrificed himself. Now, you know sometimes we'll use English words and other languages without knowing their origin. What does sacrifice mean? Sacrifice be chweja. Me it na chweja no ngweri he kam mado in a chunyereja. Sacrifice always refers to the sacred being to whom an offering is made. Because it is by offering something to the sacred that that thing becomes sacred or holy. Two words. Sacrifice comes from two Latin words. Sacer, which means holy, and facere, which means to make. Therefore, to sacrifice means to make something holy by offering it to the Holy One. By the way, ngasu tag Latin ha, unujeji de monsai ni mugu no sunenda kuzirim Latin. And, uh, so Monsignor and uh, Father Emma taught me. But I taught Father Uchenna Ize. 
Father Chena was baptized by Monsignor Mez. And Sister Teresa Ann and Endo Tueno here. And Teresa Ann seems to be one of the uh, exceptions. Because the layman I know here, one of them, by Emmanuel Anne. Amamo, when you have a book in Manir, Nayan and Monsign, you book in those days. So, to make holy by offering something to the Holy One. So, it is only in reference to God that we make our lives holy and we make our love real. That is why Paul says, It is possible. For you to be giving your things out to share yourself, even your body. Kerry man no mogu woke him in the mad no be your maga. Paul said, it may be an act of selfishness and not love. First Corinthians chapter 13. The only way for it to be love is that you are doing it not for your own sake, not for the sake of the person but for the sake of he who made you and me. And this is the specific character of Christianity. Without this self-sacrificing love, including the love of the enemy, you can't call yourself a Christian no matter how many sacrifices, other sacrifices you offer. Because he said to love God and your neighbor better and more than holocausts. Better and more important than holocausts. Now that you know it. Obroni mariha emarni nonsui na lezenigwe Mani Pietelego. So he had me bata. Bobrini make day. So let us pray that since we know this, first of all, we have to know it. That God may give us the grace to live it out every day. Paul gives us some examples. If you love a person, don't go counting his weaknesses and his offenses. Don't keep score of wrongdoing. As a matter of fact, until my father died, my mother kept accusing her, him. No jidogie. Makanokpe idigie shuya jirije kwa naya. How many years ago? I don't know. But she still kept remembering, remembering it. I say in the gate chizi he chizos. I chizogum. But uh, it is not just a feminine thing. It is in all of us. We tend very often to remember wrongdoings. And we forget good deeds. As they say, God gives and forgives, but man gets and forgets. Don't keep score of wrongdoing. Don't rejoice when somebody makes a mistake. You don't rejoice at some other person's sins or downfall. So these are some of the signs that you love your neighbor as Jesus loved us for the sake of God. Otherwise, you may be near to the kingdom of heaven, but you will not enter. Since you have come near, take the next step so that you may enter by glorifying God with your life. So, Iga hose boro wachine kegi nanya were mogini ne were mogini ne